because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Oh, we have we recorded? Well, Robert, I have a nice yes. light, a nice light 8.2% IPA I'm going to be sipping on to, to start off this, uh, this uh, podcast, and I'm very excited about it. Adam, that's Elysian. Oh, pop, crack, pop, snapple, fizz. Boom, boom, boom. <sighs> nice. <sighs> how, how are things, Robert? Awesome. How's How's it down on Maui? It's doing great here in Kauai. It's, 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 uh, yeah. are you, I see a little, like, I see shadows, which means you have sun. like you have, you have sun, like we have no sun. It, it's the weather's been ridiculous. Like everything's closed. All the power out powers out, like on the whole Island. It's, uh, I'm moving tomorrow. I had to sell my car today. Everything's a mess, Adam, but here we are. This is called dedication to the pod because I've got a flashlight. I've got three candles that, and I've got you in front of me. And uh, we're we're podcasting because that's what we do. Uh, Robert, that is what we do, and uh, your dedication uh, is not going uh, w- without notice. I noticed. It's, it's it's very very impressive, and I'm very proud of you. And uh, let's do this thing. Thank you, Adam. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Adam. So we've got a lot to cover. We've got obviously the uh, MLP drafts have taken place. We have the premier, the premier level uh, draft. Then we have the challenger level draft, which happened uh, a little bit earlier, uh, a week later after the premier. Um, but the premier dust is, has settled. The, the challenger draft happened today. Uh, we've got the results to that. This will probably come out after that's been released, of course. Um, so we can we can dig into all of them. So. Um, what uh? What, where do you, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with some of the premier premier teams? We don't have to go through all of them, but we can kind of go through sure. um, just some of the highlights of what what we thought the overall. No, definitely. So what 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 day is this? What this is Monday night. So I think they're going to yeah. announce the challenge. They're going to announce the challenger tomorrow night. So uh, I'm sure that this this pod will get released on Wednesday. So uh, Wednesday morning, hopefully. Yeah, perfect. Per- uh, perfect. So uh, yeah, so we'll be up to date. Right. So, so, so Rob for premier, as we know, I'm, I've been helping out a, a team, uh, the hard eights, uh, really very knowledgeable owner and, uh, has a lot of good insights into the game yeah. and to the player pool already. So I was just kind of a little bit of a sounding board, giving him some advice on some players he didn't know as much about, uh, and whatever. And so Rob, I would say that looking at the player pool for premier, I think the first inclination of most of the teams would be to 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 go guy girl or girl girl first, uh, given the depth of yeah. both uh, sexes. And so, kind of our strategy was what what was similar. And so uh, we had the tenth and the fifteenth pick. And what? Our owner decided, and I signed off on it as, you know, I mean, hey, we're the hard eights. We, we roll the dice. We gamble. Uh, so what happened was is Richie Tauzon from BLQK had the number six pick. And so what we decided was we would switch picks with him uh, from our pick 10 to his pick six contingent on us getting Riley Newman at the six spot. If Riley Newman was taken before the six spot, it was just going to be a wash and uh, we would just stick with our original picks. And so we ended up getting Riley at six and it pretty much changed our entire uh, uh, kind of vibe of the draft um, because we ended up going guy, guy uh, (laughs) kind of a uh, uh, kind of a contrarian type, type move where uh, I think a lot of the owners yeah. were looking at that girl, girl, or, or possibly guy, girl. And so we, we pivoted and went guy, guy, uh, obviously that is going to affect us later in the draft with, with our women who I think are very, very solid, yeah. but I believe we are the only two, uh, the only team with two real alpha males on the court. And that's kind of exciting. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, you, uh, you guys will, you know, for, for those of you that don't know, uh, so the hard eights, Adam's team that he's been helping out snagged Riley at the sixth spot who, you know, I think most people know that Riley's going to be out for that first event, but you guys felt it was uh, worthwhile grabbing him regardless of him missing that first event, just because I think over the past six months or so, he's shown that he's, he's arguably the best player in the world. So 
I think that's a fair, it's fair, it's a fair move, honestly. And uh, then, then grabbing AJ Kohler in that second men's spot is, I mean, you got two number one guys in my opinion. So I, you guys, will, you guys will be easy favorites in every men's match, which yeah, maybe that's a little bit more pressure, but um, two stu- two studly men. Um, on on the women's side, you have Mary Brasha, correct, and then. Uh, Lindsay Newman and obviously Lindsay and Riley super comfortable playing together. AJ and Brasha, Mary have played a ton together and mixed. Mm-hmm. So you have you have a team that's constructed and very familiar with each other and two stud number ones and in arguably two number two females. So it's uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out, right? Because the formula that we've always talked about is um, having two stronger females because the the men's side's deeper but you have two strong men's players. So it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And um, yeah, I, I know it's not necessarily what you expected going in draft day trading <laughs> up, but um, yeah, I think well, you guys still have a pretty formidable team. Yeah. If, if anyone knows if they've done fantasy sports or snake drafts, like, like this MLP uh, you know, a well thought out plan uh, often goes to shit pretty quickly <laughs> when, when, yeah. when you get in the mix of the draft, especially only having two minutes per pick and, and you know, a lot of, a lot of things going on. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the team. I think that there's definitely some teams that you would consider on paper more balanced than us uh, uh, with, with uh, men and women. So uh, it, yeah, it's a, it's a little contrarian, a little different from the norm. And I, I'm excited to see what happens. I, I think we got a real shot uh, to do some damage. Uh, Lindsay, not, not the most dominant left side player, but very comfortable on the left, Mary on the right. So I think our team fits together nicely. Uh, we'll just have to get out there in between the lines and, and see what happens. Yeah. I think you'll, you'll be underdogs for most women's matches and you'll be heavy, heavy favorites in most men's matches. And you've got two guys that are really, really strong mixed players and two ladies that, you know, are very comfortable playing with these particular guys. So I think, I think you're set up for, you know, a split in gender. And then uh, if we're just talking paper, uh, you know, on paper matchups, you probably split in gender. And then, um, you know, just based on your, the, the strength of your two guys, you'll probably probably be slight favorites in both, uh, in both mixed matches. Yeah, I think so. I think that that's, that's a fair statement for, for the on paper stuff. And I, I'm interested on your opinion on this, Robert, uh, so I think that it's pretty clear that uh, if a female is playing with a middling guy, maybe uh, someone, a skilled player, but maybe not the ability to cover a lot of court, I think that the woman is very much the most important player in that partnership. But what do you think about these these five or six guys, uh, you know, the – the AJ Kohler's, Jay, uh, Jay Delivers, uh, great mixed player, JW, Collins brother, Riley. Do you think it's possible that some of these dominant men actually affect the match more than their female partners? Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's a really, really touchy balance of, of how much they need to play, right? Like, because as a dominant male, let's say you have kind of a lower – you know, a weaker a female partner that, you know, that's not going to hold up against some of the top, you know, some of the elite ladies, you're going to feel like you need to play more court. And you like, we always talk about this balance out of and mix. It's a, it's a, it's a precarious balance of, you know, playing aggressive, but not overplaying. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll be really easy for some of these guys to overplay and not trust their partners quite as much which, and, you know, I don't necessarily know if that's the right, if that's the right play. Um, but it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I think you know, we've always talked about how, you know, your mixed teams always, you know, it's as strong as your female player. Um, and I, I kind of, I kind of still lean towards that philosophy um, unless you're one of a couple guys in the world. Right. So um uh, yeah, I still I, I I don't think the male alpha role overcomes like let's call it a lower Premier League female. Okay, I think you're as strong as that. I think you're as strong as your female, and you the guy should probably trust. You know, if the guy overplays, he gets into a lot of trouble, in my opinion. No, no, that's that's a fair statement, and uh, 
Yeah, I, I, it's just, it's just so, it's just so not solved, Rob. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I, no. I don't really know. I mean, there's only been a couple of these drafts. You know, there's been a couple of teams uh, last year that went kind of more guy heavy and some that went more girl heavy and mixed results from both. And I, I just think it's very exciting that we're, you know, in this league with these players, these drafts and these teams and it, no one really is for sure what is the right thing to do. So uh, interesting and exciting. And uh, hey, we rolled the dice and I'm excited about it. And uh, it's, it's going to be a fun season regardless. Yeah, and if uh, if everybody's not aware, it's it's kind of interesting just from a team owner perspective in terms of, so you've got the premier level owners this go round, and then you have challenger level owners uh, this go round. And at the mid-season part, after three events, they're going to flip-flop. Everything's going to go from scratch. There's going to be new drafts. You're going to have new owners in premier. You're going to have the, the current premier owners being owners in the challenger. And basically, whichever teams collect the most points throughout the year are going to be dubbed the premier the premier level teams uh, in 2024. So, I mean, that's a big deal for for people that have invested in this league and want to create brands and want to create a revenue source, a business based off these teams. It's a big deal to be in the Premier League in 2024. So, you know, just seeing some of the challenger draft stuff today, like these owners are taking it owners and GMs are taking it very seriously in the challenger league because they want to earn all the points they can get in the challenger league. So they go into the premier and set themselves up for uh, for a good run at being a premier league team in 2024. So I kind of like how I know all this has come together really quickly. There's a lot of details that haven't been ironed out in terms of ads, drops, trades. You know, I asked Brooks about that today and they don't know all the details yet. Um, but you know, you know, props for, for getting it all together at this level, this quick, you know, you know we knew it was going to be a, you know, for a lack of a better term, a shit show in terms <laughs> of getting this ready and getting this prepared for, for January. But, um, you know, props to the MLP team for, for getting it to this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, everybody's taking this seriously. So I, I don't know if everybody understood that, but like, Roger league, you know, wins are very, very important to these yes and and i uh playing the last mlp event uh i i believe there was, there was a very small monetary uh possible bonus but i was in a, a mathematically eliminated match uh, where where we had gone zero and two and we were playing against an zero and two team and the other two teams in our in our bracket were two and zero. so all the matches matter uh for that for that next year with uh wh- wh- where you're gonna slot in challenger or or premier so it, it Everything matters. Every point matters. Every match matters. And, uh, you know, to, to, like you said, to put something together quickly and, and kind of uh, have that as a factor and, and, and to make everything count is, is great. Yeah. I've got a little bit more clarity on, I, I mentioned Riley being gone for, for your first, mm-hmm. uh, for your, for the first event, the January event, because he's going to be in Australia teaching, I believe. Um, so with your replacement for Riley, um, got some clarity on that. I know we talked about it a little bit. It's so the challenger league is going to have half of its teams eliminated by Thursday night. So out of those eliminated challenger league teams will be, well, you you guys will get to pick basically a guy to replace Riley out of those teams. So if, if a team is still alive in the challenger, let's say I'm playing uh, in challenger and my team's still alive come, come Friday, you know, picked up for you guys to replace Riley. You guys have to pick somebody um, that's been eliminated. So it's kind of interesting in terms of um, who will be available. It'll be a guy off of a team that's that's been nixed already. Yes. So so you're exactly right. So uh, before the Premier League starts, half of the teams will be eliminated from Challenger, and that is our player pool. And it doesn't necessarily mean the you know, the worst of guys will be available. There could be a very, very good guy on not the best team and he could be available for us, us to pick up. So uh, yeah, that, that is definitely a big factor. And, you know, maybe if we had to dip all the way down to player 49 or 50, we might not have made that move, but uh, there will most likely be a pretty talented player there from the challenger league for us to pick up for that first match. And I can, I'm got my fingers crossed. That's the case. (laughs) Yep. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So, 
Dig yes. into teams? Yeah, let's dig into the team. So I, I have them right here. I went and grabbed my phone real quick. So we have yep. the New York Hustlers with uh, Anna Bright, uh, Tyson McGuffin, Rafa Hewitt, and Lacey Schneeman. I believe that uh, Anna Bright was the fourth overall pick of the draft. Uh, and then uh, they picked up Tyson, as I mentioned, Rafa Hewitt and Lacey Schneeman. So this is, this is kind of one yep. of those, those teams that's a little bit more balanced uh, than us. Uh, but definitely uh, having, having taken Anna Bright and Tyson McGuffin, they got Rafa Hewitt, the lefty, to pair – uh, and Anna Bright uh, can definitely play right or left. Uh, so, so they will have to have one woman playing uh, the left side uh, with Rafa Hewitt. And I think both ladies are capable of doing that because I know Schneeman likes the left as well. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, just looking at this team. Yeah, I mean, what thoughts on where these people went overall? Just their – so they're, I'm kind of looking on the MLP site here. Their team duper overall is – it looks like one of the lower ones, if not the lowest second. Look like there's second lowest team duper overall. Is that how you see them stacking up in terms of the Premier League? Do you see them as one of the weaker teams? Uh, I, I would say I, I, I'm not exactly sure. I would put them middle of the pack, honestly. Um, I think that there, there may be in my rankings, I can't remember exactly, but I, I believe it was just a very, very slight reach for Tyson McGuffin. Uh, maybe just a, a few picks higher than I had him slotted. Um, but yep. yeah, de- definitely when, when, when you have one of those top four, top five, us having the six pick, uh, you know, sometimes it, 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 you know, it doesn't always plan out perfectly for those second two picks. So I think uh, yeah. Lacey, Schneeman, Lacey Schneeman, very talented. We've talked about her multiple times. Really nice shot maker, but uh, has a, has a big girl job and and doesn't put in a full volume of tournament play. So I do believe there is some inconsistencies in her game, even though she is very talented. And Rafa Hewitt, I would lean towards Rafa Hewitt having much more success in his MLP tournaments than I would say in some of the other. Uh, APP and PPA tournaments. Not that he hasn't had success, but I do think that his star has has shined the brightest in that MLP format. So uh, certainly not a reach from him, but maybe some of that recency bias from the, from the MLP events uh, uh, factored into that decision to to take Rafa Hewitt. But e- either way, uh, I think I think it's a solid team. I really do. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, um, you know, Lacey aside, I don't know if she's played a ton of singles, but three out of four of those of those players are, are excellent singles players. So very stacked if they go to the dream breaker. Yes, exactly. And so uh, I believe we have next up one of our more um, one of our more balanced teams uh, of the whole draft. And just a real quick tidbit uh, from what I gathered there, there was a slight run on women early on, but not too drastic, but there was a big run on women in the heart of the draft. And there were, I would say maybe eight or nine of the last seven or eight or nine of the last 10 picks were men. So a lot of the talented men dropped to that last bit where a lot of the teams that obviously went girl, girl had both their girls. And a lot of the teams that went guy, girl with their first two picks ended up getting a girl with their third pick. So there was definitely yeah. some male talent uh, deeper in this draft. And I think that this team, the Los Angeles Mad Drops, uh, picked up some of that that late high-end male talent. Their team is Catherine Parento, Irina Tereshenko, Julian Arnold, and Thomas Wilson. What do you think? Yeah, I think you have you have basically – uh, I mean, Catherine, Catherine's obviously number one female. Irina has also done very, very well in MLP format. So I think you got to give her props there. Uh, Julian and Thomas feels like a very balanced team. Uh, I think they both like the left more than the right. So that'll be interesting. I know, you know, Thomas is used to also play right when he plays with AJ Kohler, his cousin. Uh, so definitely has experience there. I, I'd probably expect to see uh, Julian on the left, Thomas on the right. I would expect probably Julian to play with Catherine and Thomas to play with Irina. Um, it'll be an it'll be an interesting dynamic. Um, 
Irina very Irina Irina can be um, you know, very serious focused, which you have Thomas who's opposite, right? Thomas is very like almost Vivian David, very lighthearted, wants to smile, wants to be happy on court. You have Julian who's very focused and loud and energetic. You have Catherine who has, has cranked it up a little bit in terms of the energy lately uh, for sure, but also kind of more serious. I think, I think it'll be interesting to see how the whole dynamic of team chemistry plays in here, in my opinion. Um, I think that's a big question mark for me, how they all get along, how they all play. Um, but I think obviously very talented team. You have probably two, I, I would say two number two guys um, and no disrespect to either of them. They're both fantastic and they, they're obviously both very talented. Um, and so I think you have, I think you have three basically number two players and one number one player in terms of Catherine Parento. So it'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be an interesting, um, it'll be an interesting team. Yeah, absolutely. And very, very strong singles team as well. I know Thomas has, you know, not played as much recently oh, no. in singles, but yeah. he's very good. And, and Catherine, Irina, no, yeah. and I play uh, singles all the time and they're very, very good. Yep. So, um, yeah, I, th- I, I think say, it's, I would say, great- Tom, I would say, I would, no, sorry. I was going to say, I, I would, I would actually put, I would actually put Thomas at four points at a time, probably the best singles player, probably the best singles player in the tournament and in, in the event, oh, in my opinion, four points oh, at a time. Man. That dude is ridiculous. Wow. Wow. Robert best in the tournament. Thomas what? Wilson, four points at a time. Wow. Uh, I mean, dude's fast dude can rip forehands. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I see by that. I like it. I like, I like strong hot takes and I appreciate that one. So, uh, really, really solid Same teams. Los, Los Angeles Mad Drops. Moving on to the California Black Bears BLQK. We have that is the team that we ended up making that trade with. So they went from the number six pick in the first round to the number ten pick, and they snagged Andrea Coop. Uh, very familiar uh, with her. She has she won the first event with you, Robert. Am I correct? That's correct. Uh. That is correct. Okay, good, good. She well, was a, just in case she was a rock as she always is. Yes, just in case you weren't going to toot your own horn, I will toot that for you, my friend. And uh, thank you. They, they paired up uh, Andrea Coop with Dylan Frazier, Federico Staxrude yep. with the three pick, and Maggie Barasha with the four pick. So um, yeah, this this is one of those teams that I I kind of uh, uh, see slightly more similar to us than that full balance where they have two clear cut number one players and then two definite number two players in my opinion. So uh, uh, definitely, you know, we, we've seen throughout the, what is it? Four teams we've talked about here. There, there's definitely some differences with, uh, you know, clear cut number ones are more balanced. And a lot of that has to do with your draft positioning. Cause as we know uh, you know, a lot of times, on the turn, what they call it for those snake drafts, you get two picks in a row. And sometimes when you have that early pick, you have long gaps before you have another pick. And that just kind of uh, breeds uh, uh, more balance or, or more clear cut number ones and number twos. Yeah. I, you know, just looking at this, I think, you know, I think Coop and Maggie, Maggie's Maggie's playing well. And she, uh, I think she's still in school. And I, think she, I don't know if she's, playing tennis or I know Mary graduated and Mary's done with tennis and she's focused full and not, I, not sure if Maggie's still playing tennis, but um, regardless, it's uh, you know, she's, she's an amazing player. She's coming along. She's a great number two female pick in my opinion. And I think um, having kind of the, the season vet with Andrea Coop to kind of lead the way will be, will be really solid. Um, you know, I don't think we've seen Dylan play as best pickleball in MLP. So as, as like you said, the clear cut number one, uh, alongside Federico Staxrude, I think it'll be really interesting to see how the, to see how the men do. Um, yeah. And I, I think Fed's a little bit of a wild card, right? Like he, um, he's obviously had great singles results, uh, doing better in mixed, having better men's results, but, um, I would, I, I definitely wouldn't put him as an established uh, doubles player yet, in my opinion. Um, but definitely on the up and up and training a lot and taking it seriously and playing full time and, and doing his thing. So, uh, it's, it's clearly an upside pick and he's going to, he, he likes the right side 
Dylan's going to be great. You know, we always talk about Dylan being probably one of the most versatile players in pickleball, being able to play the left or the right and being able to just settle in on the left uh, for men's and mix will probably make Dylan a better player and to have fed settle in over on the right, which he likes will uh, also be very solid. I think um, again, I think probably a, a, probably a middle of the road team, maybe a little below average, uh, just my take. Yes, and I think you're absolutely right, Robert. Uh, Federico Staxrud is is my for sure wild card for this team. So I think that, uh, as you mentioned with him, really taking it seriously, really going for it, really you know kind of establishing some more consistency. I am. I would really like to see if he is going to continue to rise or if he could possibly you know plateau sometime uh, earlier and early in 2023. Uh, I, I don't think he necessarily has you know, crazy power or, or these earth shattering attacks. He's just a rock solid player. And if he adds a couple little tweaks or a couple little things to his game, I really think he can take a step up or he might just settle in as a very kind of solid average player. Uh, And, and, you know, that's, that's fine as well. Uh, So, so uh, that is definitely my wild card for this team. Agreed. Uh, next up, we have the Cabo Vamos. Uh, this team is Jay Devillier, Simone Jargin, Elise Jones, and Eric Lang. What do you think about this one, buddy? Yeah, I would, I would, I would say probably, and this, this is the hard part about the podcast, right? It's like, <laughs> it's hard to give it's hard to just give your actual opinion without it coming back to bite you in the ass in some form or fashion but here we are adam so um <laughs> i would i would say i would say this team's uh in my opinion probably probably one of the lower rated teams in the league um simone simone right was the number one uh, yes simone was the number two pick correct so simone elise uh jocelyn and eric yeah so yeah, the women's side, um, I mean, what we do know is they're going to get a ton of balls back. You know, I thought Elise played amazing over um, over the weekend at the the bubbly team championships, PPA in Vegas. You know, it was fun. I, haven't, I hadn't actually watched any full matches of hers in a while, and it was really, really fun to watch her play and just dig out balls. And, and you know, she's probably one of the hardest working people on tour And it's really cool to see, you know, how much she's gotten better because she handled a lot of aggression from a lot of guys with, with relative ease in terms of just resetting, getting balls back, getting the team, getting her, uh, her and her partner back in a neutral position. So I thought she was excellent. Um, I think one concern here with um, her and Simone is that I I just worry that Simone is going to try to be too aggressive and try to create too much when, um, you know, obviously in in my opinion, her game is predicated off of just being an absolute rock solid player, never missing basically the same as Elise in terms of just able to kind of get balls back to neutral reset, kind of, you know, get out of tight spots and kind of reset the point and just, and be solid and counter and, and win like that rather than having to create. So um, my concern for the women is that they try to create when they shouldn't. I hope, and, and a lot of that's based off of, you know, how Simone's feeling and how her body's holding up. And sometimes she feels like, she, you know, you, you know, points need to be a little quicker because she's playing the long game in her head of like, okay, well, I've got this match. I've got this next one. I've got this next one. What if we go to singles? So, she, you know, she's looking at it as a, at the macro level in terms of how to, how to manage everything. So we might see it in a one game where she's attacking more than we probably want her to, but she's thinking, okay, well, if I stay out here for, you know, 80 ball rallies, then I'm not going to be able to last later. So, you know, and that's the positive of having Simone on your team is she's probably one of the smartest people on tour in terms of, in terms of how to manage it and how to, how to, how to last the whole tournament and, and prepare. So uh, that's, that's the women's side. And inside you have Jocelyn who went pretty high overall, like way higher than I thought he would. Um, generally speaking, what was he, what was third, he, the fourth third, men's pick? Third man, seventh overall, I believe. Third man, seventh overall, in my opinion, is is much much too high um, for where he got picked um, as a number one. Um, Eric, obviously, a fantastic men doubles player, 
um, needs to assert himself more. And he's not going to argue with us. He needs to assert himself more in mix and be the big guy that he is. Cause if he does that, um, and, you know, he's so big and so long cover so much court that he, he could be a dominant mix player. I just don't think he's played probably quite enough at the, at the highest level. Um, but I think if he works on that, he's, I mean, he's a beast. So, uh, and, and men's, they'll be good. Um, the, the issue is they're both, they both want to be on that left side. That's for sure. So you have two left side players, which is a little bit of an issue. Um, mixed with, I would imagine it's going to be Jocelyn and Simone, which will help Simone because Jocelyn's big and long and he can cover a lot of court. And I think Jocelyn's best event is mixed in my opinion, because he plays best when he's moving. Um, Eric, if he can play, you know, if Eric can be an aggressor in mixed, him and Elise will be absolute because Elise will get a million balls back. Eric just needs to kind of assert himself and be aggressive. Uh, singles will be a little bit of an issue because Jocelyn's really the only true singles player remaining because Simone can't move as well as she used to. Elise doesn't play a lot of singles at a high level, and Eric doesn't play much singles. So uh, if it goes to the dream breaker, they're going to be in trouble, in my opinion. Um, but again, that's, you know, I would say, I would say middle of the pack to the, to the bottom of the pack for this team. Sorry, that was really long winded. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Uh, and I thought, I thought this, so I, I won't touch too much on Cabo Vamo since, uh, you, you, you went for it there, yeah. Robert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but I thought it was interesting that at this bubbly team championships, now, let's be clear. It seemed like they were changing the rules or the format every single match and every single day, so I'm not exactly positive. But on the, the semifinals and the finals, Riley was playing with Elise. And Lucy Kovalova and another really good lady, I can't remember who, was on that team. So I thought that that was interesting that – I don't know if that was Riley's choice, the team choice, or just how it slotted out given the, the weird format – but I, I thought that if that was the choice of Riley or the team, I think that that says a lot given the talent that was uh, on that team to, to pick Elise to play. And like you said, Robert, she played very well. Good for her. No, Elise is a boss, man. She's, uh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think super underrated. Yeah, okay. And next up, Robert, we have uh, the Florida Smash. And uh, so here's my question for you on the Florida Smash, Robert. Uh, yeah. As we all, as we all know – Travis Rettenmeyer is a big fan of Travis Rettenmeyer. But yeah. would Travis Rettenmeyer be in the Premier League if Travis Rettenmeyer didn't draft Travis Rettenmeyer? Uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing Probably up. not. Just just purely be- yeah, yeah, but but purely because he he wants the left side and I think there's there's too many good left side players and not not enough guys that are comfortable on the right. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it's fascinating, right? Because he picked himself with the first men's pick of the Florida yeah. smash, which right. Travis, lo- Travis loves Travis. Travis loves Travis. So, I mean, my, my, my question was obviously a little bit of a joke as <laughs> no, well, but just, just to go, go through the squad, uh, we have, uh, yep. Jesse Irvin, Georgia Johnson, mm-hmm. Travis Rettenmeyer and Colin John. So this is that perfect example of, Two heavy hitting, heavy hitting ladies early, and then filling in the roster with, with with two two very solid males. And also another thing I noticed at the Bubbly Championship, Colin Colin played a little bit of left, and he did not play the left poorly. So um, this I, I know you mentioned just a second ago that Travis Redmire would like to play that left side, but I was pretty impressed with Colin's game. Uh, on the on the left side this past tournament I know that's a small sample size but uh just some something to monitor with this team uh two number two guys in my opinion and two clear-cut number one uh ladies uh for the Florida Smash agreed I'd and I'd get contrarian here is I'd probably put Georgia as my number one female on this team oh there's there's no question in my mind if I was going to pick a team I would have Georgia Johnson over Jesse Irvin, and I don't think a ton of people would agree with me there. But uh, that's 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 where I stand uh, with that. And I mean, well, Adam, if, yes, Georgia's playing PPA next year. It's I think I think I think in this this again 
not to be a contrarian take, but I think you look at Georgia Johnson, call it June or July. I think she's top five PPA female, like uh, easy, super. She's super been she's reasonable. been destroying. She's been she's been destroying the APP. Uh, hasn't been playing really the top talent. She's going to be able to play. She's going to be able to play all the top dogs in the PPA. I think, and I, I think I, I think we talked about this before. I, I think Georgia is going to be, you know, not number one in six months, but I think she's she's got all the raw talent and all the tools to be number one. And I think I think everybody's going to see that this year. Oh man, the the, the hand speed and the power. If, if she uses her legs a little bit more, uh, you know, intensifies a couple things. And let's let's not forget that she's a dang child, just like Anna Lee. There, the, yep. these, these, there is so much age-related upside with these young bucks and these youngsters. Uh, I am very, very impressed with Georgia Johnson. And uh, I love her game. And to be honest with you, if we would have – uh, not gotten Riley with the six and gone with the 10. I think it was very reasonable that we were going to take Georgia in that slot. Yeah, that would have been a great pick. And I, I I just find it interesting, man, because I saw like I saw a photo from Dom Catalano of a money ball tournament that we did in Florida, like probably mid-2020, so a little over two years ago. And Georgia played with J-Dub. And just like – I think I just I think I just want to kind of explain that you don't always see like these meteoric rises right out of the gate, right? Like it's not always like you come in, it clicks, and you're just amazing. Like sometimes it takes like a couple years of grinding and getting better and playing a lot of matches and getting experience, and and that's how it's been for Georgia, and not only Georgia but Jada too as well. Like because Jada was in that money ball, and it's been the kind of the same thing of like slow steady incline and then something clicks and then boom you're right there and you're in your top five top ten so it's been it's been really cool to see their progression and yeah big props to the johnson family yeah and and i just think it's i think you're exactly right skill growth is not linear sometimes it's just figure it out and you blow up sometimes it's gradual so i think that that's an important uh, topic and, and thing to talk about. And, and I just always go back to, <laughs> I don't know what this was. I think this was around two years ago, maybe a little bit, a little bit less. Um, Corinne and myself lost to JW and Georgia and mixed and just, and just thought it was the biggest disaster ever. Like it was just the worst, <laughs> the worst loss. We couldn't, we couldn't believe it. You know, how do we lose to someone else? Don't lose to JW and Georgia. And, you know, sure enough, a couple months later, a year later, it's, you know, like the, the, the most obvious loss that we could have had in, in, the, in the tournaments we played together. So I, I'm a big, I, mean, I like the Johnsons. And as I always tell Georgia, she's the best Johnson. <laughs> Fact. Fact. Uh, okay, moving on. Next team, Adam. Yes, next team, the Las Vegas Night Owls. Another one of these very well-balanced teams. Uh, uh, Vivian David. Deckel Barr, Lauren Stratman, and Kyle Yates. So uh, I believe the first pick was Vivian David as the right side player uh, with the uh, first pick. I think she was the first right sided player picked in the draft at number eight or number nine. Uh, got Deckel Barr, Lauren Stratman, and Kyle Yates. And the Lauren Stratman pick was actually part of a trade. So starting off the third round, the second pick of the third round, uh, I believe it was Dave Fleming's team. So Colin's brother's team. And they said that they wanted to do a little bit of business and trade that pick. And uh, the night owls took them up on that offer and selected Lauren Stratman, who was one of the only clear cut left side uh, females left in the draft. Uh, so that's, that's kind of yeah. what happened there. And it's a very, 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 very solid team. Yeah, so the Las Vegas Night Owls, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. I mean, we have, you know, more than anything, the big question mark with this team is uh, team chemistry. You have Deckel Barr and Kyle Yates. You have Deckel Barr and Lauren Stratman. You have Deckel Barr and Vivian David. And you have Deckel Barr has had beef with all of these people over the last year, year and a half. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, this team plays out. Uh, team chemistry-wise, because I, it's no secret that Deckel and Vivian were playing together 
you know, till mid this year and then kind of separated and found new partners. So, um, yeah, I, I, the, the big question mark here is, will everybody get along? Will everybody fight together? Will everybody, uh, you know, come together? I know Kyle, I know Kyle wasn't necessarily, you know, when I talked to him about playing some tournaments, he was just saying, Hey, I'm probably not going to play very much in 2023. Don't know if I'm going to play MLP. I'll probably play like a few different tournaments, but that's probably it. I'm going to start looking at different career choices. So, you know, pretty interesting in terms of, um, in terms of that selection, in terms of, you know, how, how dedicated and determined you are to, to do well. So I, I don't know. We'll see. It's a, it's a lot of question marks. Uh, uh, yeah. Obviously all talented players. Yeah, no, no, for sure. And, and I think that this is one of those teams that there isn't a, a lot of upside. And what I mean by that is every one of these players is already very established and very, very good. And uh, so, you know, on paper, I think they're awesome. I think they're great. Uh, but I, I don't really see any of these players making a big jump uh, because they've all been playing a long time and they all play a lot. So no, no knock on them yeah. whatsoever. I think it's a great balanced team. Uh, but I definitely see there, there, there's going to be somebody or, or a couple people uh, throughout this Premier League that just step up and kind of come out of nowhere and are just play big and play studly because they haven't been playing long or they just have that talent in them and they're ready to unlock it. So uh, the, these players are what they are and what they are is very good. And uh, I think it's, I think it's going to be a tough team to, to compete against. Yeah. And I, I, I'll, I'll say one thing. I mean, you've, they, they are very balanced in terms of right side, left side as well. You know, Deckel's yeah. a clear cut left side player. Kyle's a fantastic right side player. Viv, arguably the best right side player on the game. Uh, Lauren Stratman, a lot of weapons, a lot of fi- firepower on the left side. So, you know, in terms of gender and in terms of mix, you know, Kyle's, Kyle's also a very good mix player. I, I, I would say very underrated and mixed actually. And, uh, let's not forget singles. I mean, every one of these players is a, is a, is a star in singles. Like, you know, Kyle might not get a lot of credit, but when he plays singles, he beats, he beats very, very good players. So I think, I think this team's going to be sneaky good as long as they can all get along. (laughs) Right. Uh, totally. I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, next team up, Robert, we have the Milwaukee mashers, another, very, very balanced team. We have Callie Smith, Lucy Kovalova, very comfortable with each other, playing a lot of women's together. And they paired those two ladies with Andre Deescu and Darian DJ Young. Very dangerous team, very tall team. Uh, I think that there's a lot to like with this team. And uh, what are your thoughts, Rob? I mean, this is a this is a high ceiling team in my opinion. Um, depending on which DJ you get, um, Andre, you kind of know what you're going to get. He's he's very solid. You know, you know, he's not going to make a lot of errors. He's going to be he's going to be Andre. Um, he's going to be long on the women's side. You have you have Callie Lucy who play a ton together. Very familiar. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be underdogs in any women's match. They're probably going to be heavy favorites in every women's match. Um, and at the same time, like it's not so dissimilar from, uh, from your setup in the reverse, Adam, in terms of the hard eights of having two studly guys. And, and, um, but I would say Milwaukee mashers are probably a little stronger on the opposite gender side. You know, you have Kohler Newman, you know, they've got Lucy Cali, maybe not as, maybe not as dominant on that side, on the strong side. Um, but having Andre and DJ, I mean, uh, DJ, DJ, when he's playing well, can very much be a number one guy. Um, but that's based on potential and talent, right? Not necessarily based on consistency and results. Uh, so that's the big question mark here is which DJ is going to show up. And that's always kind of the question mark, especially when he's not the alpha. So if DJ is going to be the right side guy, which I would assume he's going to be the right side guy here, how does he manage it? How does he accept that role? That's going to be the big question. Um, and mixed, he'll be able to do his thing and be dangerous and create. Um, so yeah, I, I think this team, this team could be one of those teams that that wins it all or comes in last place. I mean, it'd be hard to see them come in last place, but I, it would be like a. I see this team easily making the semis. 
Uh, yes, no, I think it's very well balanced. Nothing, nothing to really pick on. And uh, I, I think you said it said it well with uh, a very, very high ceiling, very high ceiling team. Uh, next up, we have the Frisco Clean Cause, which kind of went in the the same one of the few teams that went the same route as the Hard Eights. Uh, they went with two guys first and then two ladies. So uh, their team is Zane Navratil, Matt Wright, Yana Grechkina, and Le- Lena Pedegamaite. What do you think? Yeah, and and. This is a this to me. This is probably one of the stranger team constructions. Um, would you agree, Adam? Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I, th- I think so. Um, I, I think that it's very, like I said, very similar to our team. But I uh, no, no knock to Zayn Havertil and Matt Wright, who have just incredible talent and incredible results. But I, I think yep. that our our guys are a little bit more dominant uh, th- th- than their guys when it comes to both. Uh, men's and mixed doubles, and I, I think that our our ladies pair up about evenly with that with theirs. So um, I think it's one of those uh, few teams, like I said, that went two guys first. And um, uh, I, I I would say that they, they they certainly can come to, to come together and play well. But I, I like our construction a little bit better than theirs, and you know that's obviously me being biased <laughs> to my own team. So uh, what what are your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, no, I, th- I think I think you know you have two number two ladies, and I think you have you have honestly two borderline two borderline number one guys. I think Zane probably went higher than I thought he would, probably higher than he thought he would, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, Matt Wright, Matt Wright, what was he picked? Do you know the number? Uh, I don't know the number, but Zane was the first male pick. So every team that I've listed yeah. has been the order that they were drafted, and I got it. I mean, obviously, Zane is significantly better at Matt than singles, but uh, I think yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's a bit of a reach to to have Zane ahead of Matt, uh, uh, as Matt is you know pretty pretty dang established in, in both uh, variants of doubles doubles play. Yeah, I, th- I think clear cut, cl- clearly better in men's um, mixed. It's Matt's play with strictly Lucy, so. Yeah, I think that's the big question mark is how he pairs with other females. So that'll be that'll be interesting to see. Um, I didn't see a ton over the weekend with the rally scoring at, at Bubbly with Matt playing mix, but uh, and it also you know it wasn't. I don't know how serious quote unquote serious the uh, the team championships for the Bubbly championships were in terms of what's on the line, but I know when stuff's on the line, Matt Wright's going to show up and he's going to ball out. So, um, but I, I guess my point was, I don't think his results are fantastic over the weekend and mixed with, with different partners other than Lucy. So that's a big question mark in terms of how Matt will do and mix with new partners. Um, you know what you're going to get in men's with Matt. I mean, elite hands. Um, he's, he's been top four for the past 10 years. Like the guy, the guy has been, the guy's staying power has been ridiculous, uh, especially for his age now. It's 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 really really. Um, I don't I don't think he gets enough credit for for what he's done at, at the age he's at, and I think um, I think people kind of get annoyed with his commands and his, like his demeanor on court. I like it, but uh, other people get annoyed with it. But I think he's 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 a stud on court, and there's a reason Riley wants to partner with Matt Wright because he's that good. Um, so I think as a men's team, they're going to be really, really dangerous. Women are obviously going to be, uh, a little bit less formidable. They're going to be tough. Um, they're going to have a, they're going to have a tough go of it in women's in my opinion, but Lena, Lena can be very good in mix. She's, she's a little stronger on the left. So a little surprised they didn't look for a, a right side guy, like a lefty. Um, but Yana, obviously very dangerous, solid PPA player. It'll, it'll be, it'll, I think the, the kind of the running theme here, Adam, is what makes MLP so exciting is you get so many new partnerships, so many new matchups. We have the rally scoring format, which anything can happen. Um, it's, yeah, it's just super exciting and super fun to see how it all plays out. But, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of speculation here, but we really have no clue on how, <laughs> how all this will play out. No, de- definitely right. And I, and I think uh, with, with those two girls, Lena and Yana, they definitely have 
they have some firepower. I think that they uh, occasionally lack some consistency or they have some up and downs. So so to compare this to our team, we have kind of the more yep. sol- solid rock type girls. And Lena and Yana might uh, make some more mistakes or, or ha- have some dips and play at times. But they have some big firepower as well. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Lena is probably about six foot and Yana for for being so tiny can really rip the ball. So if if one or both of those girls step up, uh, this team might surprise some people. Yeah. And honestly, Adam, the the having the firepower versus the consistency, I would say the firepower is is more rewarded in rally scoring. Like like so for like a Rafa Hewitt or somebody that plays a little bit more aggressive rather than um, consistent and conservative. It, yeah, I, I believe that rally favors aggression. Interesting. Okay. Hot take, Robert. I like it. Okay. Moving yeah. on. ATX pickleballers. We have JW Johnson. We have Jackie Kawamoto and Jade Kawamoto and Gabriel Tardio. Thoughts on this squad, ATX Pickleballers? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think the Kawamotos are, are, you know, underrated anymore. I think they're probably rated where they should be. So they're finally getting the credit and the respect they deserve, even though they don't play necessarily a full schedule. I think they've signed on with PPA and they plan on playing a, at least a solid slate of tournaments, which is fantastic to see because um, they're rocks. Like we talk about all the time, they're just studs. So, um I think on the women's side, what more, what more do you want than, than sisters that know each other's game perfectly well and that can compete with anybody out there. So I think on the women's side, they are really, really good. Um, obviously being able to partner one of them with uh, J-Dub is uh, that's going to be a tough team to beat as well. I think the real wild card here is, is Tardio. I mean, I think, you know, Jay, I don't think it's any secret, like Gabe um, travels with the Johnsons quite a bit. Uh, practices with them. So I, this is, this is purely the Johnson's taking the flyer on Gabe and hoping he, and hoping he can, um, yeah, be that guy that, that can support J-Dub on the right and, and play that role and obviously play a big role in mixed. Um, both guys are solid in singles. J-Dub's obviously one of the, one of the, you know, top five, I would say. Uh, Tardio, not quite there in singles, but still, a, still a can, can rip winners and good singles player. Uh, Kawamoto's don't play a lot of singles, but don't, don't, you know, discount them. They are, they are solid when they do play singles there, they they get results. So, uh, I think it's a good team. I just think Tardio is a huge wild card, especially for where he got picked. What number was he, Adam? Do you know? I, I, I have no idea. El Bandito a- Gabriel Tardio. Yeah, it's it surprised me uh, where he got picked. So it, it yeah, it it's. I mean, he's obviously it's, it's an upside play. So he's a young he's a young kid. He's got he's got great upside. Um, probably lacks some of the decision making and some of the reps and that kind of thing. Um, so we'll see. But they're yeah. they're obviously leaning towards the upside, which is which is not necessarily a bad play in uh, in MLP. Yeah, you're 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 right, Robin, and that's obviously you, you have to put the wild card as Gabe Tardio. Um, and I think he was picked pretty early, like 18, 19, or 20. So there were several guys picked after Gabe Tardio, and I could be a little bit wrong there. But I personally am not 100% convinced that Tardio is there yet. Let's be clear, he's 17. I love the kid. Uh, have a great uh, rapport with him, and I think he has a ton of talent. And I'm I'm calling him out right now to prove me wrong. I'm I'm gonna say Tardio, you're not quite there yet. Prove me wrong, buddy. Prove me wrong, and you got the talent to do it. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't. I, I, I'd be surprised to hear anybody think that Tardio should have gone where he went in the draft. Right. But um, hey, yeah, this is an opportunity to show that he that he belongs there. So you know, J Dub took a flyer and. You know, I think we've seen J-Dub do in the past, right, where he he chooses like, – I think it's – I don't know who he did before. But, um, yeah, he, he's been known to play with people that he he's has tight rapport with and is friends with. So, right. you know, no right. different yeah. here. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how Pardio, you know, steps up. Yep, definitely. All right, moving on to our yep. next to last team, we have the Seattle Pioneers. We have – with their first pick, they went with the second – 
highest ranked PPA player in the family with Collins' brother as the one picked. We have mm-hmm. Edda Wright as their second pick. Megan Sheehan Dizon with the third and Tyler Loom falling all the way down to, I think, pick 43 or 44 or something along those lines to round out the squad. And I will say this, Robert, we uh, we but we, we did our pre-draft rankings, my, myself and the Hard Aids owner, Timothy Parks, and we, we had a conundrum with Edda Wright. And if we did not yeah. pick A.J. Kohler with that – I believe it was the yep. 19th pick in the draft. We were going to go with Edda Wright, who went a couple picks later. And to be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm not really sure that either pick um, was a bad one. I think both players fell a little further than I had them ranked. So I'm not sure we could have gone wrong with Edda Wright or A.J. Kohler. Uh, pretty, pretty solid team. I think probably the only real hole that you could uh, call out for this squad is – a little bit of a small sample size from Edda Wright, even though she's got a humongous amount of talent. Uh, she really yeah. has only had rock solid results in a handful of tournaments just because she hasn't played a lot of tournaments. And then, of course, uh, Megan Dizon, who hits it big, plays big, has has a ton of talent in that paddle, but occasionally has some bouts of inconsistencies uh, when she does play. What do you think about the Pioneers? Yeah, I think I think you're spot on, Adam. I think – you know, I honestly, I think Edda, Edda is, while she has a ton of upside and that they're, they're banking on that. And I've, I've been on the record saying Edda's phenomenal and she's, a, she's so good. And she is, um, I don't know if she's a clear cut number one pick. Um, I really don't like, like you said, sample size is so small. Like we haven't seen a lot, like, and what I did see over, like, I didn't see a ton of her play over the weekend, but I saw enough and like, a little, a little underwhelmed bubbly. And I, I don't know how serious bubbly was. It seemed like it was a full on kind of large exhibition, but, um, Edda didn't look quite as good there in my opinion, based on what I did see of her. Um, and yeah, spot on, spot on Megan, like can, can play fantastic. And especially that aces paddle can hit the hell out of the ball. Um, but I think women's women's could be, and I also see both of them as kind of left side players, Megan and Edda. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they set that up. Um, obviously, with Collins' brother and Loom, you've got a clear left and right. Um, I found it interesting that that they went with uh, Loom over over CJ for that men's pick. Surprised, but not surprised, right? He has to play with he has to play with CJ based, you know. <laughs> he has to play with CJ. I'll just leave it at that. And, uh, I don't know if it's by choice. So, uh, yeah, this team will be interesting. I think the, I think the women are are clearly the weak spot. The men are, the men should be fine. Uh, mix should be interesting. Um, yeah. And obviously the, 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 the gender women's side will be a little weaker. So I think they're going to be a fine team. I don't think they're by any means like, you know, top tier or in the running to win it necessarily. But uh, we shall see. Yeah, definitely, and uh, I, I, that's a fair assessment. And that that was that was the one thing that was sad when we went for the two guys first is that there was a big run on the ladies, like I said, in the heart of the draft, and just to see the Tyler Looms, the Thomas Wilsons, the Andre Dayescus kind of going in those last five or six. Uh, uh, picks was was definitely a little bit sad because uh, th- those guys are pretty deep and, and they're pretty solid and and you know not a lot of holes in their game so uh, you know just one of the you know you know one of the sad parts about going guy guy first off is letting that talent fall and I think it was a good scoop with Tyler Loom who I think it's it's fair to say right now that is a uh, little bit better than CJ at mixed and singles so uh, yeah I think I think it's a very solid team and if if Megan plays well or Edda uh, takes it one notch further up, it, it's, it's going to be a lot to handle for this squad. So uh, last team in the premier, Robert, we have the New Jersey Fives uh, selecting Annalie Waters, number one overall, shocker. Uh, James mm-hmm. Ignatowicz as the two pick, Leah Jansen as the three pick, and then rounding out the squad with Hayden Patrickwin. Uh What are your thoughts on the New Jersey Fives, Rob? 
Yeah, I mean, easy choice with AL at one, right? Um, and then beyond that, I think, I think, I, I mean, I haven't seen Leia too much on the right side, um, but AL with anybody is going to be probably a favorite, right? So they're uh, they're going to be tough to beat in women's clearly, and whoever AL plays with probably uh, probably ignite a witch um, and mix. They're going to be tough. Um, Hay- Hayden is probably to, to me, he was a stretch for premier. Um, that was an interesting choice to see him, to see him get snagged there. Um, uh, cause I think, you know, if you're looking at Dupree is probably in the thirties ish, I'm not sure exactly what, but, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, not surprising with AO. I honestly, I was surprised with James going as high as he went. I think he went as the 11th guy, first round guy, mm-hmm. which I wouldn't have put him there. So I'm looking at like, I see, you know, we were talking about this for, for Newport, like, you know, and obviously James, like we had him on the podcast. Like he's, he's all in on pick and ball. So he's, he's got, he's got high upside. He's getting much better. He's improving kind of every, every week, every tournament. So I, I get the pick. Um, still pretty high in my opinion as the 11th guy. Uh, but obviously great singles player, very good and mixed, better, getting better in men's, but I would probably put um not that high in terms of being a number one guy. And then I probably, I, I think they probably um, with Hayden, Hayden's, Hayden's a great player. He's getting better. Um, not going to be a huge force and mixed, even though he's had great success with Maggie and prove me wrong, prove me wrong, big H. Yeah. You very well might, but um, I see, I see, I see some holes. What do you see, Adam? Yeah, no, I, I think that's right. And it was the, so taking, taking Annalie first, that means that they came back through with the 24th and the 25th pick. So that was the Ignata with yeah. Leia Jansen combination. And I, I'm going to say exactly what you said about Hayden Patrick when really cool customer, really cool cat, lots of, lots of talent in that paddle. So uh, some really good shot making. And I'm going to say the exact same thing I said about Tardio. I'm not quite sure that he's year, there yet. And I'm excited to see either one of them prove me wrong. I'm, I, I will absolutely eat my, eat my words. I, I think I would not have picked either one of those players in those spots, but the, the talent is there. It's, it, it's not like it's a bad pick. I just would have favored a couple other more, more solid, consistent players uh, in those spots. And Hey, if they, if they come out on fire, uh, uh, tear it, tear it up in, in these first couple tournaments. I won't be sad about it at all, and uh, I, I'm I'm excited to see what the young bucks can bring. Hundred percent. Do uh, it, Big H. Do it. Do it, Big H. Do it, Tardio. Prove me wrong. I, I love to see the youngsters come in playing well, and and uh, and and I, I really like both of those guys. So I, I'm I'm pulling for them. 100%. Um, I just can't say if I was the GM or owner of one of those teams, I would have made that selection. But but like I said, let's go. Um, so that's that that rounds it out. That's that, that's the that's the Premier League, Rob. That's the twelve teams. Yep. Uh, very exciting stuff. And I think if if anyone's done, uh, I've said this a couple times. If anyone's done fantasy draft, you kind of know that the first handful of rounds you can't really go that wrong. Uh, you can even have the computer pick for you. You know, you're going to get a solid player. But when we moved over to the challenger draft, which we had today. There was a lot of crazy stuff going on. A lot harder, <laughs> a lot harder to value the players. A lot harder to rank the players. There's a lot of full timers mixed in there. There's some part timers. There's some people that only play occasionally. There's some talent. Uh, so, so it was very interesting in the challenger draft uh, today. And I was, I was very shocked by uh, by some of the picks today in in the challenger draft. You were picked in that draft, Rob. Start us off telling uh, telling us a little bit about your squad. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I was a little surprised. Like, you know, draft was I think at ten ten fifteen. I didn't get a I didn't get a text or a call until probably an hour later. Meaning, I did not go very early in this draft, which which surprised me to be honest with you. I thought I would have gone first few picks just purely based on results and stats and and experience but I went 19th overall to the Brooklyn Aces uh I was the seventh men's pick which really surprised me but hey 
you know, I haven't played much this year. Recency bias is a real thing. I'm coming. Um, I think I, but going 19th, what happened was I, I believe this is just what I believe is that our team, the Brooklyn aces, which is, um, you know, Kevin Durant's ownership team, Rich Kleiman, um, they got at the six pick. They got Sierra Gaten Leach. Got maybe Guy Tan. I don't know how to say that. Uh, but CGL we got CGL as the number one lady. We got me as the number one guy at nineteen, seventeenth uh, men's pick, and then we picked up uh, Karen, Karen Carr, the prof, your wife, at uh, number thirty, and then we got Greg Dow underrated little known baller right side player he's a big boy he's got hands of thunder he's got ridiculous counters he's uh he plays mostly with anderson scarpa um based in charleston i believe but very 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 talented player big guy gonna be good and mixed solid singles and uh i i i this is a very biased opinion but i think we have easily the best team in the league I think um, we have. I think we have the top, Adam. I think we have the number one female in the league, and I think we have the number one male in the league. Well, and, uh, there's 12 teams in the league, Rob. It's hard to have the number one female and the number one male. So, so somehow you pulled it off, huh? I think so. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you, and I'm very much uh, wearing my uh, my GM hat right now, and not my husband hat. But I I think that y'all squad is the best as well, uh, especially in doubles. I think it's it's very, very good, and I, I, I don't see any real weaknesses on your squad at all, except for, you know, maybe a pregnant lady having the baby a month early or something like that is, is probably <laughs> the only yeah. thing that, that can uh, 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 mess with you guys. Very, very happy with the squad, and, uh, you know, if I'm not going to play, I want, I want Corinne to be on a good team, and I think she very much is. Uh, Robert? The first pick of this draft was someone by the name of Sam Query, who, yeah. I, who, who I got to see play a little bit at the Bubbly Championships. We've mentioned it a couple times. That was a slight, serious, and exhibition vibe in some of the matches. Some of the matches were very serious. Some were a little lighter. But I'll tell you right now, I am not 100% sold that Sam Query is a 5-0 player. And to be taken first overall in the challenger draft was pretty dang shocking to me. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Sam Query being taken first overall? No, come on. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. He's never played a tournament. Uh, people got to see kind of like what he was made up of made up of over the weekend and nothing against him. He just hasn't played any tournaments. He hasn't played. He hasn't played a ton. Like this is this weekend was probably the first high level pickleball he's actually ever played. Which means, yes, he can get better. But to take him number one overall is an absolute joke. Let's just be honest. And DC Pickleball team, whoever you are, you should be ashamed. <laughs> Tell him, Robert. I love it. I love it. Way I to just, not hold I, back I, there. I did. I just told him. Yeah, really? It, no, I, it's, 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 it's bad. Come on. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with you. I, I mean, I think he had a pretty solid shoulder high forehand slap and that's really the only shot that I saw that was that was really he, he looked fairly awkward on some of the soft stuff looked a little uncomfortable when he was being attacked and uh you know I'm I, I, oodles of talent obviously great racket sport guy oh. lots of lot, lots of height lots of room for growth but I think in this exact moment uh you know I'm not sure I would have him in the top 75 players uh, his buddy Jack Sock, on the other hand, is Dude, he was good. pretty ridiculous. He was real good. He was yeah, real so good. He, I'd he love moved, to see him play full time. Yeah, he moves like a gazelle. He's got a loose arm and can slap the hell out of the ball. He has power counters and he has soft blocks when he's getting attacked and a little bit fooled. Yep. Electric hand speed. The sky's the limit for that guy. I, From what I saw, I'd probably put him at 35 to 45 right now with crazy, crazy upside uh, yeah. to, to, to squeeze into the top 10 in short order if you really, really went for it. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's what I saw from the from the tennis players, uh, the tennis pros this weekend in the bubbly. And, uh, you know, just to just to, to, to throw in an analysis of sock uh, with, with the query going number one. 
Uh, that's that's kind of how I saw things uh, in a very small sample size this weekend. Yeah, no, for sure. So uh, beyond that, though, we've got uh, so on that on that team, DC pickleballers or DC pickleball team, we've got Sam, we've got uh, Stefan, Overn, uh, Auvern. It's just it, 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 don't worry. Is about it the, though? Is yeah, it though? Yeah. Okay. All right. Stefan, uh, Shelby Bates, Monica Palicelli. So um, I would say on the female side, you have two number two ladies. On the men's side, you have one number one guy, Stefan, and one number three man, Sam. Yeah. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I I think it's fair. I think it's fair. And you know, I mean, like you said, apology, like, Sam. Apology, Sam. All I wanted, yeah. all I wanted from you was to play a tournament before the draft. That's it. <laughs> Just play a tournament. Show what you got. Don't expect like, yeah. come on, like you can't expect to get drafted premier. Um, you know, without ever playing a tournament. Or and <laughs> come on, to go number one in the challengers. To me, it's wildly disrespectful to all all of these players that play all the time. Yeah. Um. That's my take. No, no, that's that's your take, and your takes your takes are always hot, and they're they're always uh, bad cop oriented. <laughs> and they always hurt me, Adam. They always <laughs> hurt me. But hey, yeah, and, and but like, I'll keep doing and, it. And from what I've heard, he's he's a super cool guy. He's had I've had a couple playful interactions oh, with him man. online. Wes West West Burrow's super cool, and and you know says he's a great guy. So this is no knock on him. This is just you know we're just talking about pickleball talent, and uh, I, I think that I. I'm going to go out and say that I, I agree with pretty, pretty much your assessment of that situation. Um, but let's, let, let, let's move on uh, a little bit from that. Uh, as, as we have definitely given our opinion, the number two player taken in the draft was Michelle Esquivel with the Utah black diamonds. I believe that's a little play on skiing. I don't know much about skiing, but I think black diamond skiing, right? <laughs> hey, that's really good at it. Yes. Well done. <laughs> And she is um, – Michelle Esquivel is paired with Olivia McMillan, solid right side, left side, Spencer Smith, and shocker, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rob Cassidy uh, coming in uh, to, to mix in with, uh, with Michelle and Rob. So who, who do you think is going to play with who? Well, they have to. They have two lefties. They have, they have Olivia and Rob. So Rob and Michelle are going to play together, and that is going to be interesting, ladies and gentlemen fireworks no i think i think uh no it's a it's in terms of team construction i mean they have very clear cut left side players very clear cut right side players uh spencer clear cut left rob clear cut right olivia clear cut right michelle clear cut left like yeah team construction wise it makes a lot of sense um so yeah i think i think solid um yeah that's all i got for you solid yeah, like no, well I, constructed. I, Obviously, Michelle and Rob are are you know partners in terms of life. Can I say that? Sure. I mean, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I think it makes a lot of sense that they grabbed Rob at that last spot because you know chemistry is going to be good. Uh, Spencer and Olivia, I don't know if they ever play together, but obviously it's, it it works out for them because Spencer likes the left, Olivia likes the right. Not a lot of weapons there necessarily, but. Also, not a lot of holes, and they're not going to miss a lot of balls. So um, it's going to be up for the taking. Yeah, I, I think that a solid yet unspectacular uh, label is, is probably perfect for this team, much how I would, uh, you know, describe my myself in the pickleball world. Uh, so <laughs> uh, number three pick of the challenger draft was Megan Fudge to the Dallas Pickleball Club. And if I remember correctly, I think that this was a pretty solid squad. Let me check uh, the rest of their squad. We have Chuck Taylor. We have Brandon French, the best player in Dallas, which maybe had something to do with that pick. I do not know. And they uh, finished off their draft with uh, Krista Gachiva, which I honestly do not know a ton about. Do you know anything about Krista Gachiva? Uh, I, I do not. I think I uh, think maybe I've played her before, and I wouldn't even be surprised if she beat me before. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've played her before, and I wouldn't be surprised. That, 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 was, that, that yeah. was perfect. That happens. Uh, I think. I think. Okay, I'll tell you right now. I think Brandon French is a is a huge is a hugely underrated player. I think he is sneaky good. 
especially when he has a good partner. And I think, you know, that's the question here is who's going to play the left because Brandon is probably better on the left. Chuck's probably better on the left. Uh, but I know I know Chuck's, Chuck's had plenty of times. He's like, left, right, I don't care. I'll play whatever. So I would probably expect to see Brandon on the left, Chuck to the right. Uh, Fudge, you know, you know my my stuff with her. Like I hate playing her in mix. She's 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 a beast, and you can't attack her. And she's really solid, and she doesn't seem to get too confused with attacks and speed up. So it's, uh, <laughs> she's she's a she's a good player. Uh, mixed and mixed and women's and singles. So I had her probably slotted in like top one two females. So them grabbing her there is a good spot. Um, yeah, I think French French got. French, his his duper is a little lower, so whoever is running the Dallas pickleball team uh, probably knew him, and I think you're you're dead on where um, he got grabbed because he his duper is much lower than people saw. And uh, yeah, yeah, Krista, and she probably beat me in mix. Don't know much about her, but she's probably pretty solid. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, and, 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 and I mean, I, I've I've watched I've watched French just you know miss every other ball that he's hit for a match. But yep. I've played French a couple times, and the dude is not easy to play against. If he if he's playing well and he is you know not making uh, a handful of those soft mistakes that he sometimes does, he's got some funk. He's got some very hard to read, interesting speed ups, and his hand speed is just fine. So I th- I think French yeah. is a very nice player, and uh, you know besides for occasionally going in the black hole and making a bunch of errors. Uh, which you know doesn't happen too often. Uh, I, I think I think he's a, ve- a very solid pick, and I, I agree with you on Megan Fudge as well. I would say she's the best singles player in the Challenger draft uh, for for females, and uh, yeah, I, I think that their team is is pretty solid. And the next team up, Robert, the Chicago Slice, I also think is one of the better teams in the in the uh, Challenger draft. They started off their draft. With the number four pick, Susanna Barr, the dark horse, the net lord. And yep. they uh, went with Emily Ackerman, who I think is a pretty solid player. And I don't think a lot of people know that name, but I think that she very much deserved uh, a spot in this draft. And then they finished off their draft with Connor Garnett, one of my, you know, kind of slight uh, duper sleepers, as in he was a better player than where he was ranked with duper. And then they also uh, have uh, paired Connor Garnett with Ryler DeHart, a, a solid left side, right side combination. What do you think about the Chicago slice? Yeah, it, I think Emily's sneaky good, and she's she's playing a lot more this year, is is what I've heard. And I played mixed with her in Houston, and and Emily's going to be good. I'm telling you, she's got she's got a lot of power. She's not she's not like a, I mean. She's not large in stature, but she can she can hit the hell out of the ball. And then Connor's a good upside pick. Um, I don't. He was the first guy picked. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's a pretty big reach as as their top guy. Um, I don't think Connor was probably in the top 30, 40 um, available, but it's a, it's clearly an upside pick. Uh, Ryler is a good pickup as well. Uh, he's, he, you know, I think Megan probably focused Megan Fudge, his wife or Megan Fudge to heart. I'm not sure if she goes by Megan to heart, but regardless, she, she was clearly focused more on the ball this year. You know, they have a, you know, it's a full family affair, which is really cool to see them, to see them embrace pickleball and, and do the whole thing. Uh, but I, you know, to my understanding, Ryler's going to be really focused on pickleball this year. So grabbing him as the final male pick is great pickup. I expect, um, you know, Ryler, Ryler on the right, Connor on the left, Connor likes to do it back in. Um, I think they're going to be a good men's team. And um, I think in mixed, I would probably see, I know Susanna likes that left, left, the left side, so I'd imagine she's going to play with Ryler and I'd imagine Emily's going to play with Connor. Mm-hmm. And I think they'll be a good team, man. I think they're, uh, yeah, even, even though like the men's picks are like, I would say they almost have two number one females because I think Emily's that good, especially when she starts playing a lot and focusing. Uh, so they have that kind of that kind of ingredient of two number one females, two number two guys, but the two number two guys both have a lot of upside and are going to start playing a lot more. So I think this is a team, 
you know, with the exception of Susanna, who's established and everybody knows what you're going to do with her. And it's, you know, she's, she's very, very solid. I would have put her top two, three females in the, in the challenger league draft. I think you have three players with a ton of upside that can, that can really do a lot of damage. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I, I said Connor Garnett is one of my sleepers and that was more for a, you know, a second guy sleeper. But when you take two solid females first off the bat, you, you know, you're going to have to uh, not necessarily reach, but you're going to have to pay the price somewhere. And, and uh, you know, to, to grab him with the first uh, the first male might have been a reach, but I like their team. I think it's solid throughout. And uh, I, I think that they could definitely be contenders uh, uh, here in this challenger bracket. Uh, moving on to the Bay Area Breakers. Uh, taking mm-hmm. Pablo Tellez with their first round pick. Eva Radikowska, who I've only seen play singles. I have not seen her play doubles. And even though her her name first name is EWA, it is Ava. And mm-hmm. we have Christian Alshon, the the uh, you know, the what was it, the uh, non dick swagger. He's just a dick swagger. Whatever the non dick swagger minus the non <laughs> minus the non. That's right. That's right. So uh, obviously a ton of talent. Uh, very young. Very new to the sport. Very good at tennis. So you know he could he could rise slowly or he could really bust out. Um, so I, I, that that's a full fledged upside play and and it could it could reap a lot of benefits if it works out and to round out their squad. They have Rachel Summers, who does not play a lot. I had the privilege of watching her a little bit at a Next Gen event, and she definitely has some talent, very good at singles, uh, really good strokes, and uh, she's obviously a total wild card because the sample size is very small. Yep. I don't have much there because I don't, I don't know many of them. Okay, so let's just move on to uh, the next team. We, we talked about the Brooklyn Aces, the best team in the league, uh, because they have Corinne Carr. Um, and uh, number seven, we have the Atlanta Bouncers, who selected with their first round pick, Hunter Johnson. And they uh, paired Hunter Johnson with Brooke Buckner uh, out of North Carolina, who uh, is very, very new on the scene. Uh uh, was a fill-in pick with Catherine Parento a few weeks ago, and she has some sprinkled in some solid results, but still a, a relatively unknown. And who are we talking about? Atlanta. We have Ben Newell, who was your partner for the previous MLP, a, a electric lefty. A little bit of a little bit of inconsistencies can creep into his game, but a lot of firepower. And uh, oh my goodness, Christine McGrath rounding out their squad. Haven't I haven't heard heard from her in quite a while. So that's uh, uh, solid to see her uh, uh, get get in the mix with this draft. What do you think about that uh, Atlanta team, Rob? I mean, Atlanta is my hometown, Adam. So, you know, I thought it was Conyers. <laughs> Conyers, GA, let's go. Conyers, yeah, right. Georgia. You know, the Atlanta suburbs extend like a hundred miles every direction on Atlanta. So it doesn't matter if you're, if you're, if you're from Georgia, you're from Atlanta is basically how Atlanta has grown. Uh, no. So this team, um, yeah, this, I think they're going to struggle. I'm going to just be br- brutally honest. Um, <laughs> we're going to play them. For, Adam, we're going to play them first round. They're going to beat us, but I'm just, I'm just saying, I think, uh, yeah, I think they're going to struggle. I think, uh, Hunter and Ben, you know, the, the good part is Hunter, Hunter wants to play the left. Ben is a lefty play the right. I, I've never seen Brooke play. I've seen Christine play. Uh, yeah. I, I, to, to be honest, I think they have, you know, a well, Chris uh, Hunter, Hunter and Ben are good at singles. Well, Hunter's Hunter's top easily top 10 by, you know, of everybody in singles, uh, I, I think they're going to struggle. I think they probably have two number two guys and two number two females. Is that bad? Uh, yeah. Uh, next. Sorry. Next. Yeah, this is why I hate the oh, podcast. It's, it's, it's hard with stuff like this. You know, I, I had the somewhat friendly top 25 rankings a couple months ago, and now it's, <laughs> now it's getting a little more serious. And Nothing's it's, friendly. It's hard. It's hard. You, you, you have to, I mean, we're, 
we're giving our opinions, but you know, some people, some people take it with a grain of salt. Some people don't. So it is, it is one of the, the, the rough parts about the pod, but you know, we're just going to power through and keep on keeping on. So right. we got so, Vahala well, what's your take, Adam. What's your, hold on. What's your take on the line? Don't just make me the only asshole here. What's your take? But that's, but Robert, that's your role. <laughs> you you God, are the be, role. Adam, just let me be the good compass for one. I just want to be the Hey, I, I played with Hunter Johnson last uh, MLP, and I, I thought we played pretty well together. So, um, so like, I, I yeah. do, I do think that Hunter is a little bit further along in his doubles game than Yates. Um, so yeah. I, I do like him on the left with Ben Newell, but. When you were playing with Ben Newell, I saw a couple of those matches last ye- uh, last year, and and Ben he he can he he can have some inconsistencies. He's going to do a random, like crazy, incredible, athletic. The dude's got bigger calves than my than my quads. You know, he he's an yeah. electric mover, an electric athlete, but he does have some some uh, uh, some consistency issues. So I, I would probably put this team a little bit below average uh in, in in this challenger bracket and i'll just leave it at that prove me okay. wrong prove me wrong people prove me I, wrong i want Everybody people to prove wrong. me wrong if, if, if i if i if, if i knock you or i'm critical and you prove me wrong i'll be the first person to shake your hand and say i was wrong that's just how i feel right now moving on number eight the vol vahala volleys i don't know if that's like Valhalla, Valhalla is like, isn't that like Vikings, uh, heaven for Vikings or something? Or is that Valhalla? Yeah. I don't know. But anyway. No, that sounds right. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have we have Bobby Oshiro or Oshiro. I apologize, Bobby. I'm not quite positive on that. A very solid uh, female player. We have Callan Dawson, uh, Absolute men's doubles rock, improving mixed game. Uh, a little bit to be desired on the single side of things. We have Rachel Redker and Todd Fott. So Rachel Redker uh, don't have a ton of experience watching her play, but she does seem to be a little bit more of a, uh, even though she's pretty small in stature, more of a, a firepower, uh, go for your shots uh, type offensive player. And Todd Fott out of Utah had a, had a nice run or two and a couple PPAs earlier in the year, but I haven't haven't heard a lot from him uh, lately in terms of results. Uh, met him at the Houston Open, seemed like a nice guy, but uh, I I would probably label label this squad as uh, solid but unspectacular as well. Kind of, kind of a, uh, a middle of the pack ranking uh, from me. What do you think, Robert? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think, uh, yeah, big question mark for me on on Wrecker. Haven't seen her play much. Um, I think Todd's. I think Todd's underrated. I think Todd's really good. Um, can probably make some questionable decisions, but very solid. Callan, you know exactly what you're getting. He's going to make a ton of balls. He's going to be. Yeah, and he's very, very good at men's. I think the question marks is how, how how they'll do in mixed, and also how they'll do in singles because I don't see a lot of singles firepower here. So, I think you know for them to do well, they need they need to take both gender doubles. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a I think that's a fair statement, and uh, yeah, it's it's just. I, I've just seen whether it's playing against or commentating or watching the streams. I've just seen so many more minutes and hours of these premier league players that it's, it's tough to just give a definitive description of, of some of these challenger players. Cause uh, the sample size is so small and we just don't know. So I, I think that your assessment is completely fair and uh you know, just, just again, I'm just, I'm just really excited to see it. And we're going to, we're going to have some, some people <laughs> for sure fall off the cliff and we're going to have some people that really step up and play big. And uh, you know, that's, that's what some of these teams are going to need. Uh, number nine, we have the Texas ranchers selecting M V Lee, Lee Whitwell with the number nine overall selection pairing her with the winter soldier, Pat Smith. Uh, their third pick was, I don't see, oh, Jeannie 
Irokina, who I do not know much about, but I've heard a couple birdies in my ear saying that she is uh, a solid upside play. And the rounding out the squad, we have Steve Podium Deacon, the Canadian Beaver. What do you think of this squad, Robert? I think they're a top three team in the league. I think um, – I don't know much about Jeannie, but I do know a lot about Lee. Uh, she makes a lot of balls, uh, thrives in, in the MLP format. Um, Pat, super dangerous. Deacon, super steady. Um, obviously, questionable singles team, right, which, you know, I think a lot of these teams are questionable singles teams. But yeah. – um, in terms of men's doubles, Pat and Steve will be very formidable. Um, yeah. For Steve to go in the to go in the forties, you know what are we talking? We're talking eighties overall. Is pretty wild. I mean, the dude, the dude has been on so many podiums, and I, and I feel this a little bit too. Like he's been out a bit. He's coming back. He he just got he just got a bronze, I think, with with Ignatowich, and. Um, which, yeah. I mean, Steve's Steve's a player. Steve's a player, and to get him to get him with your last pick is a yeah, that's a good team. Uh, Pat can be Pat can be very dangerous and mix as well. Uh, it kind of depends on his health and how well he's moving and if he's getting down and if he's if he's making a lot of balls. Uh, but Steve's Steve's great. Lee's great. Don't know much about Genie, so that's my big question mark. But I think mm-hmm. this team is very very good. Yeah, uh, no, no question. Uh, Lee, complete veteran, smart player out there. You know, de- definitely does not have what you would maybe consider a lot of firepower or a lot of court coverage. But in her area, she's one of the best out there uh, in this draft. And the, the the fellas, you know, full fledged veterans right here. And uh, Pat's been around for a while. Steve's obviously been around for a while and fortunate that both have had a few injuries. If they're both healthy and they're both playing well, this is going to be uh, what, what one of the better men's teams out there. And I, I wouldn't consider either one a takeover type mixed player, but they've both had some pretty dang good mixed results throughout their careers. And they both have really quality hand speed. So I think this is a very good team as well. And, uh, if uh, if if uh, if Jeannie uh, steps it up and, and is uh, you know right there in the mix, I, I think that this could be a contender for sure. Yeah, don't disagree at all. I think they're probably one of the better teams in the league. Yep, there you go. Easy Number drive. Uh, what'd you say? Arizona Drive. Let's go. Arizona Drive. West Burroughs, Sarah Ansbury, one hundred percent third shot percentage. Just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, Andreas Siljestrom, who I think played a couple tournaments with Joey Farias. Uh, and so I do believe he, he lives on the east side of Florida. And to uh, Sarah Burr, the Australian, uh, to round out the squad. What do you think of this one, Robert? Uh, I don't know much what to think. Uh, I know, I know. Obviously, Burroughs and Ansbury. I think Ansbury is great. Um, her stats, her stats in Columbus speak for themselves. She was one of the top uh, female players in the entire event, and you know, slipped down to slipped down to the Challenger League here. So, I think she's super dangerous. Really good. Uh, Burroughs, a lot of firepower. Great left side player. Um, you know, a lot of effortless power that we talk about. A ton of talent. Just doesn't play full time, so that's kind of the that's kind of the question mark. And then uh, Sarah Burr, um, Australian, don't know much about her. I know she's been on a stretch of some tournaments. Um, don't know what the don't know what her status is because she's been here, I believe, since maybe November, December, and if she's going to be here January, March, June, I don't know what we're looking at. I guess she's going to fly back and forth. So that's a, that's a big effort from Australia. <laughs> um, but, but super cool, super cool to see not, not Americans in this. Yeah. Um, right. I don't know anything about Andreas. So I can't, I can't speak to that at all. Um, other than the fact that I guess that was a choice by Ansbury being on the East coast. I don't know. Um, 
I'm sure he has a good tennis background, but obviously not very established in, in pickleball yet because he wasn't really high on any of the duper lists. So I, th- I think the big wildcard team, Adam, I don't know. I don't know what to think, to be honest with you. I think Wes and Sarah will be a very good team. I don't know much about Sarah or Andrea, Sarah Burr and Andrea. So I think uh, a lot to be determined. Yeah, I agree. I, I know nothing about Andreas except for that little tidbit I gave that I think he played with Joey. And I have seen very little of Sarah Burr, but the, the bit that I did see, I, I wasn't terribly impressed. But like I said, it was it, it was a, just a, you know, a, a game or a game and a half or something along those lines. And that, that doesn't really mean much. So, uh, yeah, un, un, don't know much about the – the, the three and the four pick, uh, I think the, the Sarah Westboro's combo is completely formidable. So, uh, yeah, moving on. Number 11, the My, Miami Pickleball Club. We have yep. Alex, Alex Trong, Regina Franco. Uh, why can't I see it? Uh, Matt, Jeff Warnick. Jeff Warnick and Matt Manassi. Oh, my. Uh, so, this, yeah, this is hey an me, interesting. Adam. I... I, I am not. Uh, I, I, the, those fellows are questionable. I'll just I'll just go with that. Um, Manassi was playing for a while, about a year, year and a half ago, and he kind of stopped. And he's the uh, uh, he does some commentary. He's the coach to the stars. Um, you know, I've had some off court interactions with him. Seems like a pretty cool dude. I I, I kind of like him, but I I am not a hundred percent sold that he he should have been a pick in this draft. And I am also not. 100% sold that Jeff Warnick uh, should have been a pick in this draft, even though I absolutely love Jeff. He's one of my favorite uh, favorite players, had some of my uh, initial results in this game of pickleball with Jeff. Uh, but I, I would have to label uh, their men's picks questionable. Yeah, I think uh, – so I was told that Manassi's the GM of this team, and I think the – I don't know. They had the 46th pick – at a 48 and Manassi picked himself is what I heard. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but <laughs> I heard, I heard Manassi just picked himself with the 46 pick. Um, <laughs> Adam, I, I will say this one thing that I don't necessarily like about MLP per se is that you can own a team and pick yourself and that you can also GM a team and pick yourself. I don't like that. I think, I think there should be separation. I think if you own a team, you shouldn't play. I think if you're a GM, you shouldn't play. Um, I think there needs to be separation there. Um, call me crazy, but that's, uh, that's my hot take on that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think obviously the men are going to struggle, uh, but again, you know, I'll probably lose to them now that I said that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, um, yeah, I, I think, I think it's a, it, it's, it's probably one of the weaker teams in the league uh, just based just on paper, right? Who knows what can happen? Warnick can start chirping. Uh, <laughs> and I, again, I like all these people too. So it's, yeah. it's hard to do this. It's hard to do these assessments and analysis, knowing that these are your peers, knowing that, you know, these are friends. Um, but at the end of the day, like I like doing this podcast and I, I, I like, I like giving assessments and takes for, for fans. So here I yeah, am. Well, that's, that, that's the benefit of being the good cop is like you, you, you say something critical and they're like that dang Rob. And I say something critical and they're just like, Oh, Adam, no big deal. So <laughs> that's, that's one of the benefits of being the good cop. Um, but no, I, I think I agree with you. And uh, it, it's, I, 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 I don't have any like super strong thoughts on, on the GM and the coach thing. And I considered putting my name in the draft, but I just kind of wanted to go the full fledged uh, GM slash commentary route. And, and so that's what I decided. Uh, but I, I think I probably would have been drafted somewhere had, had I submitted my name and I was healthy. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see if that, if, if that continues to happen in the next couple of years, or they kind of put it into that, maybe, maybe, you know, Rhett Meyer's grandfathered in, you know, being one of the first owners. So, so maybe they don't pull that card from mm-hmm. him, but it's, it's probably something that they should uh, visit and kind of, and kind of check out. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right. It's, it's tough. It's peers. It, we're, we're in the mix. We're in this community and, it, and it's not always easy. So last squad here, Robert, we have yeah. Columbus pickleball club. We have 
Millie Rain, Becky Ryan, Yates Johnson, and CJ Klinger. So I will also say that I would probably put this team at uh, in, you know the bottom handful of teams. Uh, I think it makes sense they went with cj Klinger because this is columbus ohio and he is an ohio boy uh young buck uh definitely has some solid talent big uh big tall lefty and uh that makes a little bit a bit of sense to pair him with yates johnson i was a little bit surprised that becky ryan went so high i think she is great super scrappy makes a lot of balls uh you know training down there in southwest florida uh, so, you know, not like a crazy reach, but I was a little su- surprised to see her go uh, ahead of some of the other ladies. What do you think about this Columbus squad? Oh, I didn't realize Becky went as high as she did. Becky went, um, oh, and they went back to that, 12-13, um, Millie, Becky. Uh, that's really surprising me. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize they went that. Um, that's really surprising, especially since Regina – it's very, um, yeah, I mean, mainly Regina went below them. Uh, that's, that's pretty surprising. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I'd be curious on who, uh, yeah, that's all I would say. Surprising. Okay. All right. Hey, Rob, Rob, you're <laughs> in the dark. You're, you're, you're in the dark. Adam, I'm, I'm so, I'm so in my head about, about saying, saying stuff. So I'm just not going to say much. And no, fair enough. And uh, we, I've man, already, this is crazy. I've, already, I've already gone hard. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a this is an hour and forty five minutes. So I I think we'll just wrap it up with the draft recap with just a couple but Adam, very notable. Yes. Are you going to talk about notable absentees? Yes, uh, with some very notable men okay. absentees. You're, you're kind of cutting out a little bit, Rob. Uh, and I have no doubt that there was a couple women as well, but there was several men that I was shocked that did not get picked. And I'm just going to run through a little bit of the list here. And, you know, so, a couple of these guys, very shocking. A couple of these guys, a little bit shocking. But we have Ed and Lika, who I believe was like – 18th or something like that uh, in the actual duper rankings. We have Altoff Merchant not getting selected. Joey Farias, uh, Brendan Long, uh, Shelton the Unicorn, Jean Baptiste, uh, Austin Gridley, Daniel De La Rosa, uh, just to name a few. And I know I'm missing a couple, but. Uh, Six or seven or eight guys that I am I am very shocked were, were not in the mix. Uh, mentioned it earlier in the pod that, you know, it, it's the Challenger League. It, it's, it's tough. We don't have a huge amount of information on some of these players. And there was definitely going to be a few more reaches uh, than there was in the Premier League. But, man, uh, some, some big-time names and some, some, some fellas that are pretty good, if not very good, in all three events – that, that kind of got the snub uh, in this challenger draft. So uh, interesting to see what, uh, you know, everyone has to say about that once once these names get uh, released tomorrow evening. Because you know why? Why? Because it feels right. It feels right. Legendary. Yeah.